First idea, Manulife Financial. Yeah, I, I think people who've watched this show over the years know that I've been a fan of Manulife over the years. But, you know, right now in particular, I think it looks extremely inexpensive. You know, you, you can buy Manulife for less than book value. You compare that to, say, Sun, which we also like, but Sun's at one and a half times. And yet they're, you know, you look at their ROE fluctuations over the years and they aren't that differenti differentiated, although Manulife has come from a lower level and and has been catching up. But, I, you know, I really think that it's quite compelling at the current valuation. Uh, one thing I think may be holding that valuation down is people are worried about what's going to happen next year as the insurance companies get under the new accounting regime of uh, IFRS 17, which is going to greatly affect uh, the way they uh, book profits and uh, book new business and so on and so forth. You know, Manulife, for one, has said that it's not going to really change the way they they manage their reserve requirements, but uh, we'll, we'll see going forward. Uh, you know, again, what we have here is an accounting change uh, as opposed to, mm -hmm. you know, a, a real-world kind of change. So I, I think that uh, I would highly recommend buying uh, Manulife today. Uh, Bloomberg calculates the five-year return on Manulife including dividend, at 14% total, mm. comparable with Great West, both 14%, whereas Sun Life has been a total return of 46% yes. over five years. Well, Sun Life has certainly outmaneuvered the others in terms of its shareholder return, which, you know, we own both of them, and, uh, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, they've had very astute management over the years, and they, they both have slightly different product mixes and different geographic mixes, and... Uh, over the last number of years, it has really favoured Sun Life. Why has Manulife been such a, a laggard? Though? Well, they have a lot of those legacy businesses that are left over. I mean, if they could do a deal now to, uh, say, get out of their long-term care businesses and some of those other low ROE businesses that they've had in the U.S., okay. uh, I think that you'd see a definite pop in the stock. OK, let's uh, move on. You've got a gas-heavy idea here for us, ARC Resources. Yeah, we like ARC Resources. Again, we think it's very inexpensive. And, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, these companies promising to give a great deal of free cash flow back to the shareholders, and ARC Resources is certainly one of them. But, you know, the one thing that we like about it is they are a very, very dominant player in the Montney region. Um, they down the road because of their uh, positioning. They could be a player in LNG if that ever comes into effect in Canada. But in the meantime, uh, it's an extremely well-run company. Uh, they just recently increased their dividend by 25%. Uh, but I think longer term, you're holding this because it is a very strong balance sheet and uh, it, it should do extremely well going forward. Very profitable company. And then your final idea is BCE, which is the parent of BNN Bloomberg. <laughs> yes, you know they have excellent assets, and Thank including you. BNN <laughs> Bloomberg. But uh, you know I, I think they're in a very strong competitive competitive position right now. Both them and Telus are extremely uh, competitive. You've got Shaw and Rogers fighting out uh, their various placements within the industries right now, which I think has given an opportunity to both BCE and TELUS. The dividend yield on BCE is about 5.8%. I think it's extremely well priced and uh, I highly recommend it. W would, would you have a preference between BCE and TELUS and Rogers? I mean, Rogers, of course, is embroiled uh, in the Shaw takeover. Yeah, you, know, you know, I would certainly prefer BCE and TELUS relative to Rogers. I think they've gone through a lot in the last year or so with some management upheaval and now this proposed $26 billion acquisition of Shaw, um, which remains to be seen, A, if it's allowed, and if it is, what sort of give-ups are going to happen along the way. I just think there's too much noise right now in Rogers, so uh, I would look at both BCE and TELUS, and my my preference today would be with uh, BCE, I think, uh, just as a long-term stable company in a very non-stable environment that we're in at least today and over the next year or so. A yield currently on BC of about 5.8 percent. Yes. Um, is that a selling point? And obviously a policy of increasing the dividend. Oh yes, you know they've generally increased their dividend 
quite consistently, and I think 5.8. Is a, is a very attractive dividend yield today. Actually, TELUS is at five. So, yes, they are. Uh, yeah, They're not, catching up. <laughs> not bad payouts. But yeah. they've always lagged it, I think, a little bit in dividend yield. Oh, okay. Michael, we've